The Umbraco Management API is a brand new headless API that was released with Umbraco version 14. Now, if I'm honest, this isn't the most intuitive API to use in the world. There's a bunch of caveats around it, especially around security. So that's the reason why I thought I would do a deep dive video. I'm going to show you how to do things like set up this API in Postman, do all the authentication, how we can extend the API and create custom endpoints ourselves, and how we can expose this API in production if we really want to. So if this sounds good to you, you're in for a treat. And as always, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you want to support this channel. Also, think about buying my Umbraco CMS development book. So with that said, let's look at this management API. So just a quick reminder before we get to the good stuff that I have created a related tutorial for this video in the description below. You can also access all the code by going over to my GitHub, which is John D. Jones, doing a search for this V14 starter kit. And while you're here, you may as well follow me as well and be a legend. So I guess the best place to start is talking about what actually is this management API. So in very simple terms, the management API is a move by the Umbraco team to be more headless compatible. And it's brand new as part of Umbraco 14. And the big thing is, is that it replaces basically a bunch of C-sharp stuff, a bunch of Angular stuff that we could use in Umbraco V13 and below in order to interact with the CMS. So we can see here it's the replacement for back office controllers because it lacked RESTful capabilities. Now, the easiest way to learn more about the management API is to look at the Swagger documentation that ships with the CMS. So after you've installed your Umbraco v14 website, you basically want to go to slash Umbraco slash Swagger slash index HTML. Now, from the selected definition, we've got the management API here. So clicking on this should give us the docs. Now, if you're anything like me, I've got to admit, I did have slight heart palpitations when I saw this portal and what the management API offered. Because just in terms of security, if someone could remotely access this management API, then you're in for a world of pain because they could delete pages, they could put rude content on your web pages, they could delete users, log people out, all of that nasty stuff. So the important thing to say is that the Swagger documentation we're looking at now is only available in debug mode and you can't access it in production. Likewise, the management API, you do need to do some authentication in order to talk to it. And there's only certain accounts that can access the management API remotely. And I'll talk about this in a little bit later. OK, so we're back to the management portal and I quickly want to mention you can access this directly with slash umbraco slash swagger slash management slash swagger dot jisan. Now, just in terms of what the management API offers you, it's a lot. There's about 100, 100 plus different endpoints that allow you to do pretty much anything that you can do in the CMS yourself. Now, because it is REST, you'll be using your classic types of post, get, delete, and puts to do your CRUD type operations. When you're in Swagger, you can see examples of what the request body might look like. You'll get descriptions and prompts of what you need to supply. Now, just to quickly show you the vastness of this management API without boring you, I thought I'd quickly scroll through the types of endpoints that it encompasses. And as you'll see, there's about 50 different categories of endpoints. And within each category, expect to find five to 15 different types of endpoints. So as you can see from this list, pretty much anything you can imagine within the CMS, you can do via the API. So document type stuff, data type stuff, users, members, security, search. We can tag stuff, templates. We can do the stats. We've got web hooks. We've got user stuff. So hopefully, as you can see, there's a bunch of interesting stuff here. Now, currently, none of this is documented on umbraco.com. So the best way to learn about this API is to look at the Swagger documentation. Right, I think now it's time to get practical. So I want to show you how to connect to the API in Postman, and then we'll look at how we can build a custom API ourselves. So in order to access the API, we can do a get, put, whatever, and you put in your website-based domain, 
And then in order to access endpoints in the management API, you do this slash umbraco slash management slash API slash V1 and then slash your endpoint name. So because I'm calling my custom API, I decided to call my endpoint custom API. Now, the important thing next is the authorization tab. And in here, you can see that we need to use a type of OAuth 2.0. Now, setting this up is a lot more convoluted compared to using the content delivery API. So just in case you weren't aware, Umbraco ships with two APIs. So we've got the management API that we're looking at today and the content delivery API. So the content delivery API, it's a read only API. It's less dangerous and its intention is to be used if you're creating a headless website and you need to access your Umbraco content remotely via an API. And in order to configure this API, you basically add in some config within appsettings.json. So you can see we can enable it, but the important thing here in terms of authorization is that we can add in an API key. So you can see here, we've got this, my API key. This is the custom value I created. And then we'd add this within Postman as an HTTP header. However, because the management API is more dangerous, we need to use OAuth as I showed you. So the sign-in process is different between these two APIs and the management API is a lot more convoluted because you're gonna to have to use an Umbraco admin in order to access this API. Okay, so now let's go through these steps. So in order to set up this authorization within this tab, make sure you have OAuth 2.0 set here. This thing here needs to be request headers and not request URL. Now, because I've set this up, this bit here will be blank in yours, but basically you'll need to go to this configure new token. So the token name needs to be back office swagger. We need to have a grant type of authorization code with PKCE. Then we need to have in this auth URL. So you can see my auth URL is my base domain and then it's slash umbraco slash management slash API slash V1 slash security slash back office slash authorize. So this is our auth URL because we basically need to do a callback. We also need to have our access token URL and this is umbraco management API V1 security back dash office token. Now, before we go back to the Postman configuration, I thought it'd be useful to point out that both of those endpoints were in security, so security slash back office. However, if you look within the Swagger documentation, you'll notice they don't exist here. So it's just something to be aware of. Now, in terms of logging in, we've got this client ID and the client ID needs to be Umbraco dash Postman. And then underneath here, we need to change the code challenge method to SHA256. And then in terms of this client authentication, it's send client credentials in body. Now, after that, you could probably leave the rest of it done, but you can see here that I can click on this get new access token button. So if I click on this, what will happen is that in my browser, my Umbraco instant will load. So I now need to log in, which hopefully is admin at admin.com, password one, password one. After I log in, you'll get prompted to open up Postman. Now, if you click cancel, or if it gets blocked in the browser, this is going to prevent your call back from working. So we want to open it in Postman. You can see here, my authentication is now complete. And if I click proceed, you can see that at the top, I've now got my access token. And before we do anything else, do not forget to click on use token, otherwise it will be thrown away. And you can see here that my token has now been added. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of steps here. So we need to set everything up. We need to do some post back URLs. Um, we also need to make sure we have authorized using browser. And so after we've done all of this, if I now click send, you can see that my management API that I've created here, it's purposely throwing an exception. However, it's being called and we're not being blocked in terms of authorization and authentication. Now, one thing I think that's definitely worth pointing out is that remember that setup is for non-production. 
And if you head over to the management API website at umbaco.com, you can see that in production environments, only umbaco back office client is allowed to connect to management API. In non pod environments, umbaco swagger and umbaco postman clients can be used. Now, if I go back to my setup, you can see this is the reason why I've got umbaco postman here. So if you want to do this in production, this isn't going to work and it's something to be aware of. Now, this authorization definitely gives me mixed feelings because for development, going through a few steps to set up Postman so I can test the management API, brilliant, I don't really mind. Now, let's say that I want to build a headless website and I want to make use of that management API. Now, how do I actually access it? Because I need to do open ID. So this means I now need to go out, research other packages. I need to pull something in via NPM. I need to do some config management. Basically, I've just added in a bunch of extra complexity and management just to talk to this API. So on the one hand, I think REST is good. However, it is annoying that it's now getting a lot more complicated to do some of the basic things you could do in Umbraco previously just with C Sharp. Now, my ranting aside, I think the next thing we can look at is how can we actually extend the management API ourselves so we can add in custom endpoints to do whatever it is we want to expose. And in order to do this, we need to jump back into Visual Studio. Now, there is definitely some good news when it comes to extending the management API because we can do it all in C Sharp and it's very simple. All we need to do is create a controller, inherit from a new base class, and then expose the data you want from an endpoint. Now, before we get to the code, I'll quickly walk you through my program.cs just to make sure that you have everything set up. So you can see within Create and Braco Builder, we've got this Add Delivery API. So you just want to make sure that you've got this added. Also underneath, just make sure you've got Use Back Office and Use Back Office Endpoints just to make sure that you're registering all the middleware and all of that kind of good stuff. If I'm honest, if you didn't have these two things, Umbraco wouldn't probably work anyway. Now, in order to create this API, things are pretty simple. So create a class and you need to inherit from this brand new management API controller base. Now, in order to give your endpoint a name and define where it lives within the management API docs, you're going to use two attributes. So the first attribute is versioned API back office root. And in here, you're going to provide your API name. Underneath, we can do API Explorer settings, group name equals, and then put the group that you want to bubble up your endpoint in the Swagger documentation. Now, the actual controller itself is pretty simple. You can see that I've just got an action here. I put HTTP get on it, and I'm just returning an OK. However, all you need to do is do some normal Umbraco dependency injection, access your helpers, expose the data you want, jobs are good. Now, just in terms of the Umbraco management bit, if I go back to the API docs, you can see custom group here, custom API here, and this completely maps to custom group here and custom API here. And that's it. That's everything you need to know in order to do API development with this new management stuff. So the final thing that I want to show you in this video is how to enable Swagger in production by updating the Umbraco pipeline. Because if you are creating custom endpoints, this might be useful to help you debug stuff. So going back to our program.cs, you can see I've got this enable Swagger in production, basically extension method that I've created. Now, if I go over to my Solution Explorer, you can see I've created two classes and the first one we're looking at is this Umbraco Builder Extensions. So public, static. Within it, we've got a public static, and it's going to return a type of I Umbraco Builder. And then it's got enable Swagger in production. So this can be whatever you want to name your method. And it's going to do an extension. So this and then I Umbraco Builder Builder. Now, in terms of configuration, we're doing Builder Services Configure and we're using the Umbraco pipeline options object. And then within here, the first thing we're going to do is remove anything related to Swagger routing rules from the pipeline. 
So basically we can do a options, pipeline filters, remove all, and then the filter is swagger route template pipeline filter. So remove everything to do with swagger. And then underneath here, we're going to create a new filter. So options dot add filter. Then we're going to do a new swagger production route template pipeline filter. And this is something that I've created. Super simple. Click on this. You can see public class. And then we're going to extend or inherit from swagger route template pipeline filter, passing in the Umbraco pipeline value here. And then all we're going to do is override swagger is enabled. And then from here, we're just going to return true constantly. And doing this, building your website is basically going to enable swagger in production for you to do testing for your custom API. You're welcome. So I think that covers everything that you need to be aware of in order to be able to get up and running with this new management API. Now, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts below if you like the idea of REST or do you think the Umbraco team should have stuck with C Sharp? Now, before we part ways, if you do want to support this channel, then the best way is to purchase my book on Umbraco CMS development. The link is on the screen right now and in the description. Now, aside from that, do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to see it keep going. I might do a few more Umbraco videos in the next few weeks, but we'll see. And there might be some news around that shortly. Otherwise, on the screen right now is a link to my Umbraco V14 feature tour video. So check that out if you want to learn more about this management API. Otherwise, hope you're having an ace day and happy coding.